Parents will take care of their children when they're toddlers. But as they grow older, tables will turn and children will start taking care of their parents. That's what Melesiana Nyiranezidjayo hoped for when she delivered her first child, Ndatimana Silvan, some 37 years ago. She followed up with two more children, whom she hoped to be her blessings in her late stages of life. But little did she know that they would be her burden. Jiraba Kunzi Emmanuel is her second child while Jeanne Nyirahabimana is her first child. All of them were born with disabilities and since then, their life has been a mixture of troubles and tears. Uh, they were all born with this disability. When Dantimana was born, he was extremely small, and as he grew, he kept his small status. We took him to school and he studied, but later dropped out when I gave birth to the second child, who was also disabled. I took him to the hospital, but he couldn't recover. Dantimana dropped out of school so that he could take care of his younger brother. Later on, Jeanne was born. She was relatively big compared to her brothers, but later on, she developed the same disability as well. In the early years, the children were getting advanced treatment from a white doctor as they seemed to be recovering. But then, the war broke and Melesiana had to flee with her children. They went to Burundi and Tanzania, where they met the same doctor who treated the children before. He asked to take the disabled children abroad, but Melesiana and her husband refused. Today, this woman doesn't regret this decision. Mm -hmm. I met the same white doctor in Tanzania when we had taken refuge. He immediately recognized me. He asked me about the children and asked me to bring them. I gave them children and he continued to try and cure them. His treatments improved their conditions and started to use wheelchairs he had given them. He later asked me to carry them to Europe, but I refused. By then, I had a husband and he didn't want to go to Europe. We didn't want to leave our families here alone. I wasn't sure if I could find something to do in Europe. In Rwanda, I can make small money through doing some various crafts, using the resources I can find here. I wasn't sure if I could have the same opportunities in Europe. When they were stopped in their country, Melesiana and her family came back to continue their life. She continued to do physiotherapy, which had learned from the white doctor. But her life quickly became miserable, slowly. She's no longer living with her husband, and her deteriorating physical stamina means that she's no longer able to take care of her children as she used to do. I have to take them out every day. It's always very difficult because I'm no longer physically able to do it swiftly. I take them out by my arms and sometimes I fall down with them. Sometimes I get home tired from cultivating and then trying to take them in the house again becomes very problematic. I already overwork to make ends meet and I'm not getting any younger. Yet they still depend on me for everything they need. From food to everything including cleaning them. At first, Melesiana used to keep up with their physiotherapy, but as they grow older, she was no longer able to do physiotherapy for them, nor she was able to afford the price for professional physiotherapists to do it for her.
Even though Melesiana is already an old lady, she has to do everything in her power to work every day so that her children can find something to eat. Most of her jobs are manual work which requires her to use her physical strength and given that her age is very well advanced, she's struggling to take care of herself and her children. Mm. Today, she wishes people to help her since she's struggling to find food and other necessities to help her children. I have so many wishes. Sometimes I go broke for days, not even being able to afford basic necessities like salt. I can go for days without any money, especially now that my daily job of cultivating fields has been severely affected by climate change. Sometimes they ask me to prepare them some good food and it always hurts me when I cannot afford it. When they are sick, I go to the pharmacy to buy them some medicine because I can't afford to take them to the hospital, both physically or financially. On his side, the 36-year-old Ndatimana Silvan, who is the firstborn of Melesiana, is hopeful that life would be better for them. A devoted Christian, Ndatimana is wishing to marry and build his own family, even though the solution is quite difficult. Okay. <laughs> He understands the calculations and other mathematical basic formulas. You can help this family by donating through givinglife.com with links found in description and pinned in top comments. Thank you for watching. I'm Elijah and this is Afrimax English. Remember to subscribe. <laughs>